<laughs> so question is about father of nation and it's so ridiculous frankly that mohandas karmchand gandhi is regarded as father of nation now i am not discussing whether he was a good guy or a this guy everybody is a mixture and he was a mixture in his own way it's also true that destiny put him in a position at a point of time britishers loved him because well he suited their purposes best but that's not the direction i want to take but who is really the father of the nation india if we go back to ancient times we see ram ram not only represent the highest noblest ethics of the aryan ideal before him parshuram is too i mean <laughs> difficult to for you. but rama as a human maryada purushottam and we see that he joined from all the way from nepal vaidehi right up to janakpuri to lanka he set the highest standards of ideal for a king and how he should govern taking all the subjects together how he should place the nation above all so ram is the father of indian what we today call as india but some may say okay india went through an eclipse long period when okay in that case if you want to put father of modern india then it has to be shri arbindo for a simple reason logically i'm going to speak about it logically between 1857 and 1905 we see the flame of freedom struggle has sunk there are some here and there some chingaris you know those sparks congress is in a mood to supplicate then congress i don't know about present day congress or what exists of it but that time congress is in a mood to supplicate they don't even want to write a strong article that's how shubhendu started writing in hindu prakash and this said no 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 please don't write uh, we'll be prosecuted so shubhendu i mean it's all documented but from 1902 we see shubhendu slowly anushilan samiti and all this start 1905 with bang bang shubhendu enters into the revolutionary movement what does he do he awakens the soul of the nation through bande matram through durga stroth through his articles not only does he awaken the soul of the nation he gives the road map what is the road map it is there in his writings bande matram passive resistance boycott all the things which later on were used by gandhi ji and others were basically all there swadeshi swaraj swadeshi boycott and passive resistance these are his doctrines and he wrote so elaborately about all this so he laid the road map for india's freedom then he also laid the road map for the future of india that means what are the lines along which india should walk and it's it's a long subject including village life city life today we are talking of smart city how a city should be organized how the village should be organized autonomy uh did you know devolution of powers or centralization of powers political system everything you can imagine industry commerce agriculture military and above all the spirituality of india there is nothing which he has left untouched who does all this only a father does all this do we conceive that if we walk on the lines of gandhi ji today because we should follow the footsteps of the father that's what somebody did when china attacked are their friends it is god's grace that they withdrew for various reasons imagine today with all this scenario with turkey with china and pakistan and follow gandhi ji's ideas you please come take away our cows marry our women like noa khali slaughter us doesn't matter is this what a father does yes all are a father's children the muslim and the hindus and the christians everybody so he must take equal care of all he can't play a partisan this is what gandhi did where shurabindo took everybody together if you read through his writings he even speaks of muhammad as a yogi shrest he doesn't deny decry anyone he also 
says the challenges of the Mohammedanism, he takes everybody together like a real father and asks each of us to worship the mother. He says that, well, you may have different religion, but can you deny that you are child of the same soil, of the same mother? So who has done all this? But Sri Who can really restructure our life even today? Charkha and goat milk? We seriously believe it? Honestly, one has to be foolish to believe it. I don't have any other word. To believe that today, charkha and spinning the charkha, Swadeshi never meant that. Swadeshi meant make in India, which is what, you know, Modi ji is doing. Because he meant, you should, unless you are self-sufficient, tomorrow you will be squeezed economically and commercially, which is what we see the nations are doing. Swadeshi meant that unless, it didn't mean cutting yourself off and, you know, not making better cloth. It didn't mean that. So this simply meant you should be self-sufficient. And this is a logic. And he says that, see, what has happened? What Britain did? They crushed the Indian productions and they brought in there. So he could foresee it. He said, no, you must may have your own mills and produce. He didn't mean that do with the sooth katne wala charkha. That's a complete distortion of the word Swadeshi. Okay, you want to make it as a starting point, so okay. Nor can you make goat milk the ideal in a country where cow is worshipped. Now I have a problem with this goat milk issue. Because then cows are no more important. See, our country has revered cows. There is a reason for it. Whatever we, you can drink goat milk, cow milk, buffalo milk or whatever milk, lion's milk. It's okay. Camel milk if you like. But the point is that Sri deeply rooted. People talk about Gandhiji's Gita. For sure, Bindu, the Vedas, the Upanishads, the Gita, the entire soul of India, nobody, no saint, sage, scholar has ever done such a massive work for bringing out the spirit of India as is enshrined in our own scriptures. Some people have picked up Gita, some have done on Upanishads, but nobody in such a thorough way. And nobody has shown the way of the future and sown the dreams within the psyche of Indian nation towards the future, which we see in his message of 15th August 1947. And what more proof we need that India got freedom on his birthday. We will be fools if we continue not to come out of this mindset that no, somebody declared once, somebody as father of the nation and printed on currency note, we must follow. We are not meant to follow the ideal of the Lati and Chashma and bare-bodied ascetic. This is not the ideal of ancient India. Ancient India is of Bhishma, Krishna, Arjuna, Rama. This is our ideal. We are happy in rags and we are equally happy with riches. We are not afraid if everything is snatched away, we know that we have the soul strength to rebuild ourselves. But we don't deliberately choose an ascetic way of life and run away. We are not rigid like the father of the nation was, nor partial. Equal favor. Not this group gets more advantage, that group gets more advantage. So it's time that we wholesale heart and soul reject this idea that Gandhiji propped by the Congress and um, you know, British Empire is the father of the nation. If at all we need to put a father of the nation, it is either Ram, Maryada Purushottam Ram, somebody you want to emulate. <laughs> I mean, anybody can emulate him because it's not independent, dependent on dress or milk or any external things. It's his attitude, character, nobility of temperament. That is what you want to emulate. Or if you want to put modern India, it is Sri Aurobindo, is the father of modern India. Namaste.